This video will cover the topic, Introduction to Square Root Multiplication. Let's break it down. If we have two factors multiplied within a square root, we can rewrite this as the product of the square roots of each factor. For example, the square root of 2 times 3 can be rewritten as the square root of 2 times the square root of 3. The same is true in reverse. If we started with two separate square roots multiplied, such as square root of 2 times the square root of 3, we could combine that into a single square root and write it as the square root of 2 times 3 or the square root of 6. These two properties are very useful when it comes to simplifying more complex square root problems. Let's try some examples. Simplify the square root of 15 times the square root of 5. As we saw before, we can rewrite this as a single square root, the square root of 15 times 5. 15 times 5 equals 75, so this can be further simplified as the square root of 75. So is that as simplified as it gets? Actually, we can simplify this further by factoring out any square numbers from inside the square root. What's a square number? A square number is a number whose square root is an integer. For example, 4 is a square number because its square root is 2, which is an integer. How can we figure out which square numbers divide into 75? Let's write out a few square numbers. 2 squared equals 4, so 4 is a square number. But 75 cannot be divided by 4 evenly. 3 squared equals 9, so 9 is a square number, but it also does not evenly divide 75. 4 squared equals 16, but 16 is not a factor of 75. 5 squared equals 25, and 25 is a factor of 75, because 25 times 3 is 75. So we can rewrite this square root as the square root of 25 times 3. Why did we do that? It seems like now it's more complicated than it was before. This is helpful because now that we've written it as the square root of the product of a square number and another number, we can rewrite this as the square root of 25 times the square root of 3. And since the square root of 25 is an integer, 5, we can rewrite this as 5 square root of 3. Since 3 does not have any factors that are perfect squares, we're now done, and this is as simplified as it can be. Can we try another example? Sure. Let's try to simplify 5 square root of 6 times 2 square root of 3. What do you think we should do first? Since all of these are multiplied with no other operations in between, can we first rearrange the factors so that the integers are grouped and the square roots are grouped? That's a great first step. We can rewrite this as 5 times 2 times the square root of 6 times the square root of 3 using the commutative property of multiplication. Then we can multiply 5 times 2 to get 10 and the square root of 6 times the square root of 3 to get the square root of 18. So our expression becomes 10 times the square root of 18. Now what should we do? Let's check to see if the square root of 18 can be simplified. We need to see if there are any square numbers that divide into 18. In this case, 9 is a square number that divides into 18, so we can rewrite this as 10 times the square root of 9 times 2, which equals 10 times the square root of 9 times the square root of 2. And then since 3 is the square root of 9, we can write this as 10 times 3 times the square root of 2, which equals 30 square root 2. Wow, great job! Is that your final answer? Well, since there are no square numbers that divide into 2, I don't think it can be simplified any further. Awesome job, you're right. So two square roots multiplied can be written as the square root of the product of those numbers. Similarly, the square root of a product can be rewritten as the product of the square roots of the factors. We can use these properties to simplify square roots. Right. Sounds like you understand square root multiplication.